Welcome back. Today we have prepared four global desserts for our normals, Mike and Barry. Once they've had a taste and have heard a little bit more about them, they have to guess where in the world they are from. If they get the country spot on, they get five points. If neither of them get it correct, the closest takes a point. This is my favourite format. I love it. Do you win it all the time? I've only lost once. Who to? Oh, yeah. Okay, boys, round number one, remove the blindfold. Okay. Mm. It's like risotto muesli. It looks more like a breakfast than a dessert. Oh, it smells syrupy. Might typically be served hot or cold. Can you work out what it is? So it's warm Very, for a start. Yeah, it's warm. Or room temperature in a hot country. <laughs> <laughs> Might be. The grains have a bite. Is that barley? It's, been, it's a spiced rice pudding without dairy. Yeah, with a syrupy, almost mm. datey mm. type sweetness to it. You're right with barley. This is pearl barley. Sometimes it is made with wheat berry, so the whole kernel of grass. And you're right, it's cooked in stock. Like a sweet sugar syrup stock. I okay. guess because it's got to plump out and cook, hasn't mm. it? It's almost as spiced as it is sweetened. It's got dried Tastes fruit like and nuts in it. Mm. Uh, the syrup has kind of got those spices of cinnamon, got a good kind of chew and a bite. And the reason mm. is, it is the whole grain. So what you're getting is the bran and the endosperm, everything bar the husk, basically. I'm getting more breakfast vibes. No, oh, same. Particularly on one day of the year, this is a dessert. Because the dish itself is named after a saint. Okay, boys, you've both scribbled a country. Flip them round in three, two, one. Greece and oh, Kenya. They are not close together. So I originally thought sort of Middle East. When you said it was perhaps a religious festival and a saint, I then started thinking of sort of like Christian Orthodox and Catholic countries, whereas I was originally thinking Eid. Well, I thought I had something similar in Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> I can reveal that one of you will absolutely kick yourself. This dish stems from the Fertile Crescent in the Middle East. We're talking Lebanon. No! And the dish is named after Saint Barbara, uh, the dish called Babara, because she was literally locked away in the tower by her father, who didn't want her getting distracted by this new religion of Christianity. Oh. The celebration is on St. Barbara feast day on the 4th of December, which is Eid. So your logic was wholly sound. So now we know it is the Fertile Crescent, quite literally where grass was first cultivated, both wheat and barley. We are looking at two destinations and one of you is 1,475 miles closer. That's Mike, who takes a point. That was nearly He had wonderful. better logic, he got it wrong but he still took the point. Well done. Feels well like done. a loss. It's a shame, but yeah. The fact is, Mike takes a point and we move on to round two. Okay, number two. Boys, remove the blindfold. Oh, oh wow. Flantastic. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Mm. oh, do you know what? Mm. It's got a jiggle jiggle, mm. but it's almost like it's been solidified. Oh, that looks satisfying. Did that feel oh. good? That's beautifully set. It looks more... Um, Creme caramelly. Yeah, but even the custardy bit looks... Doesn't look very yellow. It is it more brown. That is exceptional. I'm a bit funny with things of this texture. It's so smooth, you can suck it away. <laughs> <laughs> I think in terms of texture, you probably are thinking sort of creme caramel. It tastes like a really sweet cup of tea. The caramel is really bitter mm, though, isn't it? Mm. Like in a great way. Oh, I'm, I'm, so out I'm out of my comfort I'm, zone. Oh yeah, out of our depth. This dish kind of happened in the north of the country we're talking about because there was a surplus of egg yolks because egg whites were being used to starch clothing in the nunnery. The nuns were using the egg whites to starch their cloths and things and the egg yolks were therefore surplus to requirement and it was actually an abbot that pulled this dish together. I had a country in mind what you just said, it feels like it's only just strengthened my opinion of that country. Are there any nuts in it? It's got a nutty I think, taste. I think it's like, almost like burnt butter. No nuts. However, it is a dish that wouldn't be suitable for vegetarians. Why is this so hard? It's made with bacon and one other ingredient. It does not taste of bacon. Confirmed. Locked. 
I've got nothing. Boys, now that you've locked in an answer on this translation of bacon pudding, turn it around in three, two, one. Oh. Mexico and Italy. What gave it away then? Had some delicious flan in Italy. And that's what I was thinking first of all, but as soon as you said about nuns, confirm my thinking of Italy. I thought that was too obvious, so I started thinking about South American countries, but then moved more towards eggs. No, and no. I ended up in Mexico. Well, I can tell you that one of you is 4,324 oh, no. miles closer. The dish originates in the north of Portugal. Oh yeah, no, I get that. And the other ingredient that is added is a nice glass of port. It is port and bacon in a citrusy lemon and cinnamon sugar stock that's thickened and set with egg yolks and put over a yeah, caramel. It's got, it has got Portuguese tart vibes, is not it? Barry is definitely closer and takes one point. But this is a phenomenal dessert because it celebrates what was left over and what was around, and that is bacon fat. And it was designed by Manuel Rebello, who was a abbot in Prisco. It's literally gone down in history as one of Portuguese's best dishes. Portuguese's? Portugal's. <laughs> the Portuguese. The Portuguese. <laughs> That is stunning. Phenomenal. Isn't it? Well, that does put you a point each as we move into round three. Bring it. One of the reasons I love Sidekick is that it's a great way for me to use up leftover ingredients in my fridge that might be going bad. So I had some green beans that were on their last legs, searched that on the app with some other ingredients that I had in the fridge. 30 minutes later, got this. Now I'm gonna go eat it. Okay, boys, number three, remove the blindfolds. Oh, wow. Chocolate soup. Why is Barry looking so suspect? I've had this before. I feel like I've had this before. It is topped with toasted oats. Oh my goodness. It is quite literally chocolate soup or caca super. Well, damn. We did it in a You're book. You're not allowed we? reference material. We Sit did, down. We did this in a book, didn't You're we? Cheating. All we have to do is remember it. We did. We did this in a book, right? We have done chocolate soup before. It was six years ago. No, I want to eat that. You dirty pig. I bet you drink straight out of the orange juice carton in your fridge as well, don't you? You people have a special place reserved in hell. So it is not sickly sweet, but it is slightly sweetened. Mm. It has a little bit of vanilla in it, and then it is thickened with either traditionally cornstarch, corn flour, or potato starch. It feels like a warm yogurt. It's thick, it's gloopy. I th it's not really sweet as well, which mm. is I like. It's it not sick. It's not like of... a hot chocolate sweet. No, it's like a bitter chocolate sweet. Yeah. You can taste the fruitiness of the chocolate as well. Sometimes it might be served with rusks on the side to dip in it or in this instance, toasted oats on top. And think about where some of those ingredients come from. If you're enjoying this, there are some small things you can do that make a big difference to us. Like the video, subscribe if you aren't, click the notification bell and select all. Thanks. I'm struggling with this one. If I get this wrong, I'm gonna be so angry. Flip the boards in three, two, one. Venezuela <laughs> and Canada. Well, I had previously mentioned Mexico, but I was thinking mole and they use chocolate in savory dishes. So a chocolate soup is kind of middle ground of both of those. I can't imagine having a bowl of hot chocolate in, in a hot country. So I, yeah, I, went, I went colder climate, cozying up against the fire in a bowl of hot chocolate. Both strong logic, both wrong. Oh. One of you though, is 1,858 miles closer, and this is based on the centroids of countries. So the central point of a country to the central point of the actual answer. Chocolate soup comes from Iceland, which means Barry wins because he's only 2,791 miles away. Well, only. <laughs> if you've been especially out in the cold, you come back in and it is a very warming, hearty dish. I could have had a bullseye, and now I've got a balls up. So that means Barry takes a lead as we go into the final round. It's 2-1.
Last one, I'm intrigued to see what you can pick out of this and whether you can locate it. Blindfolds off. Oh, hey. Whoa. It looks like a strawberry jam pie. I want to say sweet jam pie. Oh. Oh my goodness. It's a strawberry jam tart. Yeah, there's nothing surprising about the cross section. So far on eyes alone, we're going with strawberry. Now you've tasted it, what do you think? Strawberry is really sweet. Is it citrusy? Mm, right, do you want to play a fruit guessing game? Yeah. Let's play hot mm. and colder. Passion fruit. Oh, I'm not going to do hot and cold. I'm just going to do no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Blood orange. No. It's not a berry, it's not citrus, it's not a is melon. It tro is it tropical? Uh, yes, one of them is tropical. Is it guava? Correct. <laughs> this is a guava and quince tart made with short crust pastry. What is quince? And it's kind of a cross between an apple and a pear in the way it grows. It's incredibly sweet. That's the guava on its own. So it is a sweet tropical fruit, but it's got a slight acidity to it. That is banging. Oh, Any God. closer to working out where in the world this is from? Now we've had the guess <laughs> game with the fruit. This particular country is one of the largest quince producers. Right, so that gives me nothing. Uh, let's put it this way. Where are 70,000 tonnes of quince produced each year? Your clues, think about it. It's, it's pasta frola, it's got quince, it's got guava. You've both locked in your answers. Turn them around in three, two, one. Argentina Ooh. and Colombia. This is going to be close. For me, I was thinking tropical climates, somewhere big enough to be able to grow 70,000 tonnes. Mm -hmm. And the name, pasta frola to me sounded like it could be Spanish or, or mm -hmm. South American. Same logic, apart from the name thing. That I, I haven't considered that bit. I can reveal that you're both surprisingly close in the sense you're in the right corner of the world. Pasta frolla is literally an Italian for short crust pastry and traveled with the Italian immigrants to Argentina. As part of the mining community. However, Get in! it is not Argentina. VAR, VAR, VAR. <laughs> <laughs> this dish kind of tumbles over into a neighbouring country of Paraguay. Oh! I can reveal that Mike wins by 1,127 miles, which makes it a draw. Oh. Yeah, to be fair, if we think about Argentina, there's been a lot of immigration with mining at its heart, Italian and Welsh as uh, immigrant communities have moved to Argentina. So I've got to do more maths now, because you've both had two answers that have been closest. We now need to work out who has been the least furthest away. Or Kush, another pudding? <laughs> we'll take a fair. <laughs> Boys, oh. I'm not gonna lie, I should have been keeping tallies when it along, but I've now done all the maths. It's official. None of you got an answer completely correct. One of yours was closest. However, one of yours was also furthest away. So once we tot up all of your distances, one of you has won by over 4,000 miles. Whoa. And the winner is Barry with 8,431 missed miles. I deserve miles. this. Yeah! Yeah, it turns out, Mike, although your first guess was your closest, your second, Mexico to Portugal, kind of lost it for you. It's a big ocean in the way, isn't it? Very big ocean. <laughs> Never have I celebrated a loss so... <laughs> <laughs> Ultimately, I think we've all won because we've had another four dishes we've never tried before. But it's over to you guys. Of those four global desserts, are there any that you have had and enjoyed? Comment down below and tell us what we should be trying next time. And if you'd like to see more of these, Everyone right now, like the video in three, two, one. This is something we do now. No one's going to like it. <laughs>